We are looking at part 34 of the upper the table before me, wild harvest edibles. And <clears throat> just as a reminder uh, that as you navigate any health challenge, you wanna always uh, enlist in your, in your team of healthcare providers, someone who has a similar philosophy of care that you do. <clears throat> and the information here is educational in nature, not meant to be prescribed or um, <clears throat> to substitute for a doctor's care. Uh, <clears throat> it's part of your wellness toolbox and just simply another tool that you can add that others have found helpful and you may as well. <clears throat> and you should always investigate any protocol or, or treatment option thoroughly before implementing it yourself, not just blindly accepting it without doing your own due diligence. <clears throat> Thomas Edison said back during his lifetime that the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will instruct his patient in the care of the human frame and diet in the cause and prevention of disease. Similarly, we have counsel that states that there are many ways of practicing the healing art, but there is only one way that heaven approves. God's remedies are the simple agencies of nature that will not tax or debilitate the system through their powerful properties. Pure air and water, cleanliness, a proper diet, purity of life and a firm trust in God are remedies for the want of which thousands are dying. That these remedies are going out of date because their skillful use requires work that the people do not appreciate. Fresh air, exercise, pure water, and clean, sweet premises are within the reach of all with but little expense. But drugs are expensive, both in the outlay of means and the effect produced upon the system. That was written back in 1885. <clears throat> Seems like it's ringing true today. Third John 1 and 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. And in Romans 12, 1 and 2, Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Horse chestnut is our plant of focus this evening. Esculus hippocastinum. Cast, and we'll be looking at this tree. It has a large deciduous tree. It's in the soap berry family, uh, Sapodaceae. And it's often found as an ornamental landscaping tree. It's not native to the Pacific Northwest. It's actually native to the Balkans, but it is found across the country. I remember as a kid collecting horse chestnut seeds because they're really quite fascinating. Uh, they're large and smooth, almost look like they've been lacquered. And we collected them just because we enjoyed collecting them and had them around <clears throat> for, for some time. But they have a nice spiny outer coat on them, the tree is typically about as, as wide as it is tall, growing to 75 feet in height. The flower clusters are present in May uh, with white flowers and typically a center yellow blotch as a part of them. And you can see the leaf up here, it's yellow, looks like it's fall time. Typically the husk there that's spiny would be green, but it's, it's, this is a, a well-matured one. And you wouldn't wanna pick them off the tree, you would wanna pick them up off the ground uh, if you're getting the seeds for any purposes. Uh, but the, it's a palmately compound. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, between five and seven leaves on each uh, petiole. So the bark tends to exfoliate as it matures and underneath the bark, the exfoliating bark, so it kind of just kind of shreds off and, and comes off uh, is orange bark uh, beneath that. So there's one to five fruit per flower cluster and they are covered by, again, by that spiny shell and each shell has one to two seeds with that white scar that you can see on this cluster at the bottom right, uh, left over from where they were attached to the seed pod. <clears throat> so the edibility, horse chestnut in itself is not considered edible. However, the seeds being slightly poisonous and can create illness if eaten without any, any kind of preparation. So from an edibility standpoint, the, the horse chestnut doesn't have the same properties that we've seen in other wild harvest edible things that we've covered, but its medicinal properties have some significant attributes that we'll look at. 
Here's a horse chestnut that's standing out all by itself. You can see its size is about as high as it is wide. And this one happens to be in flower. You can see the flower blossoms and we'll see a tree blossom here as we progress. Here are the green hulls of the horse chestnut. Uh, it's really kind of a neat, a neat seed in a rather large pod. So the medicinal value, uh, it's actually a very beneficial tonic, specifically for vascular issues. It helps to control varicose veins, uh, hemorrhoids, improves the tone of veins in general, and it can be used both topically and internally. So it would be used as a, as a, as a tincture or as uh, an extract that would be added to topical solutions or used in small measured amounts uh, gradually using that as a benefit would be demonstrated. So it has uh, <clears throat> beneficial for ongoing or chronic venous insufficiency. Essentially the, the, the veins are the blood vessels that carry the blood back to the heart from having serviced the rest of the tissues. And if they are not able to adequately return the blood to the heart, um, you're gonna have circulatory back up and, and edema and other circulatory issues that, that follow. Some of those things can arise from long periods of time standing uh, still without moving around because movement is actually what drives the blood up through, through muscular action, up through the body back to the heart. There's a series of one-way valves that are positioned within your venous system that doesn't allow the blood to flow back as long as those valves are competent and functioning appropriately. If they become incompetent, either through lack of use or, or weakening, uh, and the, the tincture of horse chestnut can help to bring back that tone and quality of the, of the veins and their valves and help to aid the uh, appropriate functioning of, of the veins on their return with the blood to the heart. <clears throat> So you, you, can be, you can make the tincture at home, but probably it would be better if you can uh, obtain it from a, a reputable uh, source that makes it uh, in a standardized way. Do you want to start with a low intake if you're using the tincture and then kind of gradually work up? Because there's some other issues that need to be taken into consideration as one uses horse, horse chestnut. For example, it has a, a very good blood sugar lowering capability. So it can lower blood sugar, can be used, uh, but you must use it in conjunction with very close monitoring of blood sugar levels because it can actually work very well and you can wind up in a state of hypoglycemia. So great care must be taken when using horse chestnut that you monitor blood sugar because it's a very good um, mitigator of blood sugar spikes and can cause a, a a more precipitous drop than maybe you would be <clears throat> intending to have. So it can be a medication, not a medication, but an herbal extract that's used, diabetics can benefit from it, but they would need to monitor themselves very carefully. So there are some alternatives with, with less risk involved. We've talked about these before, plantain, reishi mushroom, and lion's mane mushroom are examples of things that diabetics can use for blood sugar lowering and, and stabilization roles that would have less uh, finicky nature associated with its use. But blood sugar monitoring would be important with any aspect of, of use of horse chestnut along with it. So varicose veins are one of the areas that horse chestnut seed tinctures are very beneficial for. So basically it helps to reduce the pain and swelling in the legs and helps to strengthen the veins. On the right, you can see the blossom of the horse chestnut. It's a very, very interesting tall uh, pyramidal blossom, and again, the seed in its spiky form. The picture on the left there is a very simplified picture of, of veins. So it's taking the whole leg as being a vein, which it's not, uh, <clears throat> but it shows the, the capacity of the, the valves there. The blood flow is up from the lower extremities. And as the muscles contract around that, it squeezes the blood up through those valves and continues to work it uh, little by little towards the surface or towards um, the top of the heart and re-entering the circulatory system through the, through the heart. <clears throat> so there's a one-way valve, the pressure would push those valves back. However, as those valves 
may become incompetent, then the veins begin to pooch out. You can see the legs on the individual here, you see the veins surfacing and causing uh, the various symptoms associated with varicose veins. One is edema, the other is, is pain, itching associated with that. You can see a more realistic diagram over here on the right of normal veins. And then the role of the varicose veins basically as their wall and their integrity, integrity breaks down they um, bulge and become less effective in their, in their functionality. So the, the horse chestnut seed can help that uh, significantly, the tincture as it can help to bring back their competence. So horse chestnut seed uh, as a component of uh, renal, not renal, but uh, venous insufficiency. Here's a, an article from the Cochrane Review Cochrane Review is a, an organization that independently brings together volumes of research and teases out the specific uh, components of those articles based on uh, research. It uh, looks at articles and makes sure that those research articles are have integrity to them <clears throat> and then looks at their results. So overall, uh, from this Cochrane Review article, it appears that the improvement in uh, cardiovascular insufficiency related signs and symptoms with horse chestnut seed extract compared with the placebo. So they looked at leg pain with seven placebo controlled trials. So it doesn't tell us exactly how many uh, individuals were in those controlled trials, but there were seven different placebo controlled trials. Down lower, it says that there are six trials that had a, an N of 502. So that's a pretty good size sample size but six of those seven studies reported significant reduction in leg pain with the horse chestnut seed extract group compared with the placebo. <clears throat> While another compared uh, improvement with the baseline and found improvements. So the mean weighted difference uh, was a 95% confidence interval <clears throat> and they saw some, some uh, benefits from that. So leg volume was assessed in the seven placebo controlled trials of 502 individuals that were being, uh, being a part of that study. So in favor of the horse chestnut seed extract as compared with the placebo. So one trial indicated that the horse chestnut seed extract may be as effective as treatment with compression stockings. So that is one non-pharmacological way of addressing varicose veins is using compression stockings that helps to drive the edema and the fluid back to the heart without the use of, or with less muscular action being required. So people who do a lot of sitting and not moving around and or a lot of standing without muscular interaction. So moving around, climbing steps, walking, walking is some of the best exercise you can encounter, but if you're not moving around, you're not getting those muscles moving and actually helping to drive the blood back to, we were made to move. So human beings were made to move. We weren't made to be sedentary. So the adverse events associated with it were uh, usually mild and infrequent. <clears throat> also has some anti-cancer effects. So ASIN or ASIN, two different ways to spell it, is the primary active compound in horse chestnut. They looked at uh, in vitro studies as well as some in vivo studies. So in vitro is in the test tube, looking at cells in the test tube and how they react. In vivo is typically more realistic of a whole symptom or a whole system approach because you have the whole organism involved, but both are significant as far as results go. So there's a significant reduction in tumor and cancer growth in some types of cancers, specifically liver cancers, uh, leukemia, and multiple myeloma. So ASIN is a natural mixture. Here's one article of triperpene saponins. So again, that's the soap family, soap flower family, exhibit anti-tumor activity against hepatocellular carcinoma. So hepato is liver, cellular is the cells of the liver, and cancer is carcinoma. So that's from Plant Medicine, December 2009 by Zhao et al. Another one here, uh, looking at ASIN as a pentacyclic triper triterpene, again, that's a saponin, it chemosensitizes human tumor cells through inhibition of nuclear factor kappa beta signaling pathway. So that's a molecular pharmacology in 2010. So looking at an abstract portion of this article from molecular pharmacology, 
It states that agents that can enhance tumor cell apoptosis, so apoptosis is programmed cell death. All cells have a particular lifetime associated with them. The only cells that have a lifespan that is the duration of the individual are nerve cells. All other cells have a, have a lifespan. Our bones are some of the longest residing cellular tissue, but even they get recycled about every 10 years. Uh, other cells of our body, our eyes in particular, are some of the most rapidly healing. Skin is also very rapidly uh, healing, but if they lose that, that end point of their lifespan component, <clears throat> then that's where we start to have cancer manifesting itself. So tumor cell apoptosis, um, so enhancing their, their death, the tumor cell death, and inhibit the invasion, that is metastasis, have potential for the treatment of cancer. Here we report the identification of ASIN, a pentacyclic triterpenoid from horse chestnut that exhibits anti-tumor potential against leukemia and multiple myeloma. Whether examined by esterase staining, phosphatidylserine staining, DNA breakage, or, or casein-mediated poly-ADP ribose, polymerase cleavage, so basically that's a specific type of breaking down of the molecules, ASIN, potentiated tumor necrosis factor, so tumor necrosis factor, necrosis is death. Necrotic tissue is dead tissue. Uh, a necromancer is someone who is contacts the dead. So that's like the witch of Endor in the story of Saul. She was a necromancer. And that is not something that is, um, that is to be done <clears throat> because it's against the spirit of God. So the tumor necrosis factor um, induced apoptosis, but inhibited tumor cell invasion. So while it broke up the cells and, and caused them to, to disintegrate and die and then be debrided and released from the body, it also inhibited the metastasis. That's what we're seeing by tumor cell invasion going to other parts of the, of the body. So that's a fairly significant role of ASIN, which is uh, the molecular compound that's primarily bioactive, particularly in its anti-cancer effects. Some additional anti-cancer benefits, we see that uh, true for pancreatic cancer and lung cancer, both in vitro and in vivo. So in vitro, again, is in the test tube versus in vivo is tested within a living organism. A couple articles here, ASIN augments the efficacy of gemcitabine through down regulation of, of nuclear factor um, K-beta and the nuclear factor K-beta regulated gene products in pancreatic cancer, both in vitro and in vivo. So the Journal of Cancer Reserves and Clinical Oncology, that was from 2012. So that's pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer is a very significant and pernicious cancer. Essentially it uh, disrupts any kind of insulin regularity. In fact, that's one thing that should be checked for when there are irregular irregularities in blood sugar, tolerance, either excessive insulin or not enough. Pancreatic uh, disruption or, or cancer should be screened for. <clears throat> so ASIN reduces cell proliferation, that means cell growth, and induces apoptosis, which is causes them to die, in glioma and lung adenocarcinoma cell lines. So glioma is actually part of a, <clears throat> it's a, a nerve cell cancer as well as lung adenocarcinoma cell lines. So that cytotechnology of October, 2015. So it reduces the, the ability of them to divide and continue to grow. And then it also initiates, not only disrupts their, their growth patterns, but causes them to die. So that's kind of a two pronged approach for that cancer for eliminating uh, the lung cancer and uh, gliomas. <clears throat> So one thing to note in looking at these different articles, and there are, are a number of other articles too that one would look at that looks at the, the horse chestnut um, seed extract, that the extract concentrations that were used in the studies may be of a higher concentration than one might be able to find in a non-clinical setting. But it would also be want something, it would also be something you'd want to take care in utilizing and have close monitoring of blood sugar along the way, particularly because of its ability to have significant blood sugar uh, reductions associated with it. <clears throat> so 
So some harvest tips associated with, with uh, um, horse chestnut, only collect the nuts that have dropped and release their seeds. So if they're still hanging to the tree and still green on the tree, they're not ready to be utilized. Again, they're mildly toxic. Uh, carefully prepared extracts are safe when used appropriately. So again, that's starting off with a low dose and monitoring closely with uh, blood sugar monitoring and then increasing doses incrementally as um, tolerated and paying attention to, again to that blood sugar levels. So not for use by children or women that are pregnant or nursing. <clears throat> Typically, if you're using it for the indicated issues, uh, those people aren't going to be a part of that cohort, particularly looking at, at cancers typically are um, people past the childbearing years, as well as uh, varicose veins are going to be typically found in people that are past childbearing years, uh, but uh, that still needs to be stated. So also caution should be maintained when using the horse chestnut seed extract along with blood thinners. Uh, so keep a good close tab on that. And then also blood sugar levels again. So again, starting when you're starting usage, uh, pay attention to that closely and then increase the, the dosage level um, incrementally. So I've seen it come in powder form, in capsule form, and also in a tincture form. So it's available in a, in a number of different ways, but you, I would recommend uh, getting together with a uh, practitioner who's experienced with using horse chestnut seed extract. And this would probably be one that you wouldn't want to just forage out on yourself on your own in, in utilizing. So that's looking at, at, a, at a neat tree, uh, the horse chestnut, and it has a lot of different, a number of different significant properties. It's probably one that needs to have more care taken along with it than some of the others that have no no toxicity associated with them. This is one that you would want to be careful with, um, but there are many things out there that, that can be used in conjunction with, with the horse chestnut.